Hello and Merry Christmas from Seoul, South Korea. I'm Pastor Leo Ri at City Light Church, where our vision is to raise a generation of worshipers to impact the world for Christ. And we are here in the middle of the city, and I just want to say welcome to our 21-day challenge of watching and reading through uh, the, the, the Christmas story in the book of Luke. And we will be going through Luke chapter 7. And as we read it together, I just want you to think about the juxtaposition of so much happening in this passage and the, uh, the, the conflict, the, the, the myriad of people that Jesus runs into. I want you to see here that Jesus go, runs into so many different kinds of people, so many different kinds of extremes, from Jews to Gentiles, to the living to the dead, uh, a powerful centurion to a poor widow, uh, Simon, a high-ranking religious Pharisee, to a nameless sinful woman who even doesn't have a name and we have no idea who she is. And it just goes to show that Jesus transcends all ethnic, racial, socioeconomic, and religious barriers. The good news of Christmas is for all people at all times for every generation. There is nobody who is exempt from the gospel. There's nobody who's excluded from the kingdom of God when they trust and believe in the good news. And so uh, I just want to just share with us this um, today that in the midst of all of this, it's interesting to note that in verse 8, the centurion asking for the healing of his servant uh, says to Jesus, for I too am a man set under authority with soldiers under me. Why does he say this and what does it mean? A soldier is trained to take orders, to be obedient, to follow whatever is uh, the commander says. And as a man set under authority, he immediately is able to identify another man who is also under orders and he recognizes that Jesus does not act on his own accord according to his own will, but is somebody who submits to the leading of another. Jesus himself says, I do nothing on my own authority, but speak just as the Father taught me. John chapter 8 verse 28. So in the context of Christmas, what does this mean for us? How does this apply to the Christmas message? For the gospel is not simply that Jesus died for us, he also lived for us. In other words, his incarnation into humanity was an act of total submission. And Paul says that Jesus emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross, as Philippians chapter 2, verse 7 through 8 says. In other words, he perfectly submitted to the Father, and that perfect record is now imputed to us through the cross, through faith, to our belief, he is the author and the founder, uh, author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. What is that joy set before him? What is was, was Jesus wanting to go through that pain and suffering? Did Jesus want to encounter all that uh, humiliation and shame? What was that joy? That joy was you and me. That joy was us. We were the joy set before him. And his thinking of us allowed him to endure through the cross because he loved us so much, because he uh, wanted to see salvation come to humanity. He laid down his own life for our sake. And his, his willingness to sacrifice himself for us is the meaning of Christmas, is the obedience that allowed us to now become heirs in the kingdom of heaven. Rejoice, for because of his obedience, we've been set free. I want us to rejoice this day as we think about Christmas and as we think about uh, this season, uh, how Jesus was able to obey and now our sinfulness is substituted for his obedience. God no longer looks at us as sinful, broken, desperate human beings, but he sees us just as he sees his own son, Jesus Christ. God bless you this Christmas season. Have a wonderful, wonderful day and may the Lord bless you and your ministry, your family, and everything that you do. Hallelujah.